This video takes a detailed look at SLE's new lunar interface on the SLE 6000 and why it is so easy to use. The new interface is based upon the previous generation SLE 5000 interface but is a higher resolution and has allowed us to improve usability and add a number of new features whilst making it even easier to use. The lunar interface has been designed for the modern neonatal ICU. Its dark background means that it transmits less light into the room and is less disturbing to the baby, which is important in infant development protocols at night. The dark background also produces less glare, and its higher resolution is easier to read by medical staff. The ventilator screen can be divided into six main areas. Each of these areas has a distinct purpose. Section 1, down the left-hand side, is for the main controls. Section 2, along the bottom of the screen, are the primary parameter settings. These will change depending upon the selected mode. Section 3, a blank area where adjustment and confirm controls appear when needed. Section 4. Digital data panel shows current values for all measured parameters. Section 5. Page header, featuring an information bar that will show alarm conditions and messages. Section 6. Central display, where waveforms, trending and graphics are shown. Pressing any button activates it and changes its color to light gray. Most buttons have a timeout function, meaning that if they are selected and not confirmed within a number of seconds, they will automatically deselect themselves. Moving to the main controls, there are Mode, Alarms, Utilities and Layout, and give access to most of the main ventilator settings. The first Mode button allows the user to switch between any of the modes on the ventilator. Selecting it opens up a menu, showing invasive ventilation modes. Using a series of tabs along the top, you can switch between pages, showing other modes such as non-invasive and standby. Pressing either of these brings up a new menu page. If you do select an alternative mode, then a Confirm button appears in the bottom right of the screen. Pressing this accepts the new mode and closes the window. You can also close any menu by pressing the main button again or pressing the cross in the top right corner. This reverts back to the previous mode without making any changes. The Alarms button groups together all of the alarms available on the ventilator. Pressing this brings up a page with current values, bounded by lower and upper alarm levels, where applicable. If an alarm is not available, then it is greyed out and cannot be selected. If a parameter is alarming when the Alarms page is selected, then the offending values will be flashing red. Making changes to the alarms is a simple matter of selecting the alarming limit, then once the adjustment buttons appear, modifying it to stop the alarm. Then either press Confirm to accept, or the Cross or Alarms button to cancel. The Utilities menu opens a page that allows you to calibrate the oxygen and flow sensor. If SpO2 or N-tidal CO2 are installed, control buttons for these functions will also be available. The Layout button gives access to a page, which allows you to switch between various screen layouts, including waveforms only, trends, loops and SpO2 if installed. When one of these buttons is selected, a small Edit button appears beneath it. Selecting this allows you to modify that particular screen before confirming it, and pressing the Tick button will cause the ventilator to show an alternative layout. Moving back to the left-hand side, beneath the Layout button is space for messages and other buttons. For example, Oscillation Pause will appear during high-frequency oscillation ventilation and allows the user to momentarily pause oscillations without losing pressure, for X-rays, etc. Along the bottom of the screen are the parameter controls. The bottom left position is occupied by a manual breath button in conventional ventilation modes. In high-frequency oscillation ventilation, this changes to a sigh button. Users coming from an SLE 5000 ventilator will recognize the remaining five parameter buttons. As before, individual parameter buttons may change depending upon which mode is chosen. Some secondary parameter controls are located by pressing the additional parameters button. These will disappear after 120 seconds if they are not used. 
each parameter button chose a ring with the lowest and highest values for that parameter around the edge. The current set value is the larger number in the center. Selecting any of these parameter or additional parameter buttons causes two adjustment buttons to appear on the right-hand side of them. You then select these to obtain the desired value. Once you have done this, you need to press the tick button to confirm your selection. If this is not pressed within 15 seconds, then no changes are implemented and that particular parameter button deselects. Note that when you change mode, all of the parameter buttons, including additional parameter buttons, become active, allowing you to make multiple changes before confirming and activating the new mode. The digital data panel is positioned down the right-hand side of the screen. Depending upon how your ventilator has been set up, it may show a single column or two columns of numbers. To switch between the two, press and hold the panel for one second. The second column of numbers introduces additional data when required. The information bar along the top of the screen can be used to show permanent data, such as the date and time, or intermittent data such as alarms and warnings. There are five main areas from left to right. The alarm mute button. Pressing this silences the current alarm and immediately shows how long is left before resetting, counting down from 120 seconds. Pressing it a second time resets it immediately. Underneath the alarm mute button is a text indicator, confirming the active mode and any active extras, such as VTV or pressure support. In the center of the information bar is space for the alarm indicator. This may flash red, which shows an alarm, yellow, which shows a warning, or blue, which shows information. When an alarm occurs, it will display text identifying the cause of the alarm. An additional button inside the indicator will also appear to reset or show supplementary messages. The light bar on top of the ventilator will also flash in the same color. Lock screen button. Pressing this button locks the screen. To unlock, press it and hold for one second. In the event of an alarm, the screen will automatically unlock. A pause button. This freezes any waveforms on screen for 120 seconds. Pressing it a second time will unfreeze the screen. Pressing and holding it for three seconds will cause it to take a screenshot, which will be stored in a screen log. The last 10 screenshots are stored and can be downloaded later when in standby mode. Battery charging area. When connected to the mains, a lightning symbol appears. A representation of the battery with its percentage charge underneath will also be shown. The top right corner shows the time and underneath the date. Main display, which occupies the central part of the screen, is where waveforms, trends and other data are displayed. Up to five waveforms or eight trends can be displayed. On a waveform screen, the blue waveforms may be modified in orange to show triggered breaths. A green trigger line will also be present on the flow wave in some modes. High and low orange pressure alarm indicators can also be seen on the pressure wave in some modes. Finally, Certain buttons and areas of the screen feature dual function control. For example, pressing the oxygen parameter once selects it. Pressing and holding the oxygen parameter button causes additional functions to appear, such as oxygen flush or oxygeny to be selected. Other dual purpose buttons include pressing and holding the pause button to take a screenshot, or pressing and holding the right hand data area to switch between single and dual column view.